Welcome to Radiant Souls. This is Anjali and joining me is Jyoti. Today we will discuss the mother of many diseases, obesity. But before that, let us condition ourselves for the next 40-45 minutes. So please sit up straight, lift your spine up, join your hands at sternum and close your eyes. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. On the next inhale, we chant Om. Take a deep breath in. Gently open your eyes and lower your hands down. So let us begin with today's topic, obesity. As I said before, obesity is mother of many diseases. Um, what I mean is that it is the root of, of many diseases of several health conditions. So every one of us has a particular body weight uh, that is ideal for our body type. The various organs function appropriately or efficiently as per your optimal weight or the ideal weight. But when this weight exceeds or crosses the optimal limit, there is extra stress on the organs and the weaker ones, they, uh, they suffer and they do not function appropriately. Therefore, developing a disease in that organ. So health conditions such as hypertension, asthma, arthritis, heart disease often stem from obesity. Jyoti, can you help us with the BMI and all how the fat is converted? Okay, sorry. I yes. No. Uh, namaste, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Radiant Soul, and uh, well done, Anju. Uh, right now we are speaking about obesity, so whatever you said was uh, perfectly right. So, adding it in simple languages, I could say that our body needs some amount of calories depending upon the age, gender, physical activity, etc. But yeah. uh, when we take more calories, which are more than required, then it leads to weight gain. So basically, weight gain is the unutilized cal uh, calories in our body, which is stored in the form of fat. And as you rightly said about this uh, obesity, that it will cause many diseases. So it will cause the disease, but main uh, thing is we have to rule out what is the cause of it. Now, obesity can be due to different causes. First and foremost, the fo most important cause will be genetics. So it is in the genes of the family, so the person may get it as hereditary. Uh, secondly, then there will be some endocrine dis uh, disorder, like hormonal disorders like hypothyroidism, the PCOD, etc. So any hormonal imbalance can lead to obesity. Third is the yeah. stress. Stress or any mental disorder can lead to obesity because uh, during stress, uh, stress we look on to food for comfort and this can add to the extra calories which may no, we may not use. And the fourth and most important reason and the main cause of obesity is the lack of physical inactivity. So any uh, having a sedentary lifestyle or having physical inactivity can lead to obesity. And lastly, like when uh, you have some, uh, you know, you say substance abuse or a drug abuse when you're having that or else even if uh, it can be a side effect of some medication. So all these are the different causes of obesity and one has to rule out what one one will best know what is the cause of obesity in, in them and accordingly work in that direction. Now, obesity, you know, where you, yeah, you say that a person is uh, underweight or normal weight or overweight. So all that is, uh, you know, we have a scale or a parameter for measuring it and that is known as body mass, mass index. So when a person's body mass index is measured by the by its weight divided by its height in uh, centimeters square of the height in centimeters you calculate the bmi that is the body mass index and once you calculate the body mass index if the body mass index is less than 18 uh, then person is underweight but anything between 18.5 to 24.9 is considered as a normal weight above 25 or 24.9 is considered as overweight but anything about that is always considered as obesity. And obesity is, as Anju rightly said, is the mother of all diseases. But it is like a magnet attracting the different diseases, especially hypertension, 
uh, cardiac problems, certain cancers, and uh, many many other uh, disorders which can lead to it. So, how can you correct it, uh, Anju? If I'm forgetting something in pauses and all, you can always add. Yes, of course. Also, uh, I think uh, the family habits. The yes. family tends to use the same, I you know, uh, food uh, categories. So that is also one important factor. Yes, because you know they maybe they maybe they yeah. Yes, go ahead. Maybe the way of cooking of the family is not proper, or yes. since the family is sharing the same meal, so they are eating even friend circle. You know, if you have a friend circle who are eating uh, this uh, high calorie food and all, and if you are into that friend circle, even you will adopt that method. But considering everything, people usually say that genetics is in our genes. What to do? No, maintaining a correct lifestyle, which even yoga can help you, or even other ways. So, if you have a proper lifestyle, then uh, you can even overcome all these causes, and you can go into the right path. True, very true. The problem is, you know, because of this excess fat which is stored in our body, we feel so lethargic. and are often exhausted with even minimal physical activity so we fall into a vicious cycle on one hand we need to shed off this excess weight and then on the other a body or uh, you know the body condition restrains or limits us from engaging in high intensity physical activity or exercise which is required to spend this extra calorie that we have we have consumed more than required so we need to spend them how do we spend is with physical activity and diet of course but because the body is unable to do that high intensity activity we fall into this vicious cycle wherein we go on gaining and are unable to shed it off so the of course yoga has uh, offered remedies or has remedies uh, for obesity but before we look at the remedies i think what we need is to bring awareness first of all of become aware of your cause what is the cause of your problem the obesity in you then list down your weaknesses uh diet of course plays an important role so jyoti can you help us with the diet like highlight a little on that yes anju um now see diet plays a 70% role in losing weight and then you know the balance 30% is just the exercise and good sleep so when you come to yogic diet it always says that satvik ahar is the best why it's the why it's the best because it's nutritious it's low in calories fresh natural and it digests well so if you are into satvik diet uh you definitely are not uh, your eating habits are not wrong and you are on the right path to losing your weight now a satvik food will always consist of fresh fruits vegetables grains etc which means that you are uh away from those fried heavy food stuff which require a lot of energy to get digested satvik ahar ahar will require less energy and uh, you will be feeling more uh, uh calm your clarity of mind and uh, you will feel uh, have a good feeling all the day then uh, the thing is you have to improve your gut flora by eating curd yogurt or even other fermented foods because this will help to improve your digestion and an improved digestion means a uh, better happy gut then uh, regarding hydration also it's very important that you drink at least 10 glasses of water daily and then you can increase your fluid intake by taking butter milk or coconut water or even the herbal infusions etc or uh, because you know when you are having those liquids you are having lesser calories and also it is a easily digestible meal the liquid part so this will help you in your journey for your weight loss now sometimes you know it so happens that people don't have adequate amount of fluids in them that uh, they feel so dehydrated but then they feel it's hungry and they go on eating but no even a glass of water or two will suffice because uh you will see that most of the time it's not hunger it's just thirst and your body is deprived of water so even after drinking water you feel uh, hungry then you eat and then um, to lose weight one important uh, concept to be followed in yoga is mittahar that means you know actually our stomach is the size of our fist so you have to eat half the stomach with food 
fill your fill half the stomach with foods one fourth with nutritious fluids like buttermilk dal soup etc and one fourth you leave it for the mixing of the food and the formation of gases so this is you know this mithahar if you follow and how you, uh, what is the guide that uh, you are eating uh, proper like half the stomach food and one fourth of liquid is that is when you are taking uh four meals at every four hours like morning breakfast at 8 then lunch between 12 and 1 evening snack between 4 and 5 and a dinner between 7 and 8 in these four hours if like you feel hungry every four hours that means you have eaten the right amount of food but if you are not feeling hungry or full that means you have overeaten so this is the way like how you can judge the, the yeah smith ahar and then uh, chewing the food well is also very very important because this will help you in preventing overeating as well as help you in the digestion of food then you have to increase your dietary fiber because the fiber gives a feeling of satiety in our brain there is a place known as hypothalamus where there is a satiety center and once the satiety center you know you are satisfied then you won't take even a single morsel of food so when you chew well and your brain gets to register it then you reach your satiety level so this means you have not overeaten more and uh, then uh, you have to eat frequent meal you don't have to make a very long gap because if you have a very long gap you are going to feel hungry and then eat whatever is near in front of your sight so never have ever happened that state so eating every 4 hours and in between also if you are hungry you can eat uh, a high fiber low calorie snack but nutrient dense you have lots of nutrition like you can eat uh, your fruits dry fruits have coconut water lemon water or you can even eat uh, some low calorie sandwich etc or uh, apple any fruit so you know this will in between the meals it will keep you full as well as since these are nutrient dense food they give you all amount of nutrition and then uh, you know what if you eat over eat in a meal what you can do is the next meal can be lighter and you can have just uh, soup buttermilk or a liquid in it now the dinners have to be very light because if you are having a uh, heavy dinner both quantity wise as well as quality wise what and you if you sleep after that then it is definitely a recipe for weight gain because the calories won't be used up you're not working uh, yeah you're just sleeping so eat at least 3 hours before sleeping and take a light 20 minutes stroll after dinner then you have to consciously choose low calorie foods when you are going out for a party because if you are going out for a party if you have some home cooked food before and and if you eat and go then definitely you are going to uh, control the portion which you are going to take in the party and then you have to stick to simple healthy methods of cooking rather than deep frying and uh, heavily uh, you know marinating it and all simple food will be definitely uh, best thing for your weight loss and uh, then you have to avoid the weight replacement uh, meal meal powders etc because all these are you know considered as tamsic so once you stop them you going to regain the back uh, weight back so it will be like yo yo dieting gaining losing gaining losing but in the wrong long term this is not a solution so definitely a good lifestyle where you are maintaining that lifestyle without feeling uncomfortable and eating nutrient dense foods but sensible foods will definitely all sattvic foods will go a long way in helping you that you have to avoid a lot of sweet chocolate wafers spicy food but uh in frequent like not very frequently in frequent treats you can have so that you are not totally depriving you know because once you go into a healthy lifestyle of following a good diet and your yogic exercises your body body automatically will start accepting those uh better sattvic foods rather than so even if you have sometimes a few chips etc but you will be very mindful because after uh, getting involved in yoga you become more mindful about what you are eating so then you will definitely your body will be uh, mindful and then it will start uh, not accepting much of it so that that realization comes from within and also finally you can reduce your salt intake because of that will salt will cause Uh, fluid retention and then it will definitely be a factor for weight gain anju you can continue okay. yeah so why whatever uh, jyoti explained is uh, perfect as per the yogic diet what happens is usually uh, why do, does this fat 
gets accumulated is because your metabolism is sluggish. So you need your metabolic activity to be good, right? So you need to have, uh, feed yourself or rather eat at frequent times so that that metabolic activity is on. If you tend to fast, if you skip your meals, the body will start storing fat. So that's one way of gaining weight. The other thing, like Jodi said, that avoid chips and tamsi food. So you can make better choices. If you're craving salt, perhaps you can have maybe some makhana, but don't eat chips. So make better. If you want sweet, have dates, have natural sweet. Don't eat the artificial sweet. So by inculcating these small habits, you'll be able to eliminate the uh, extra calories. Right, Jyoti? Yes, Yes, Anju, you are perfect. And uh, can we go to the questions? There are many questions. Uh, before we go to the questions, let's talk about the physical uh, role, physical exercises. What role yes. do they play? Anju, physical activity uh, as well. Anju, so, in the questions, it, uh, I think these will be answered in the questions because they have queries about it. Oh, perfect. Go on. Please read. Yeah, that is the reason I told you let's go to the questions. Okay. There is a, one question from Brian DeMello. Can you explain mm -hmm. which specific yoga practices are most effective for weight loss and why? Asanas, okay. In asanas, anything which has cardio effect, like Surya Namaskar, dynamic asanas like Paschimottanasana Asana and Halasana dynamic, Chakki Jalan Asana, Nok Asana, anything which increases your heart rate because to increase the metabolic activity you need to increase the heart rate so anything which is cardio effect will help you to burn calories having said that if somebody has a health condition please do it under guidance you cannot do it by yourself so you need to practice under guidance first and then take up a uh, you know a routine for yourself then pranayam vastrika pranayam is very good uh, kriyas like agni sar and kapal bhati Bandhas like Udhyanva, all these are very good practices to lose weight. But again, practice under guidance first and then you can fix your routine. Jyoti, would you like to add anything yes. here? Yes, yes. Uh, Brian, here you know you have asked for which specific yoga practices. Uh, see, if uh, here it, it is mostly personally customized related like how a person is whether highly obese or just on the borderline. So, you know, if it is comfortable, if a person is really very, very obese, the first thing is that he can he or she can start is walk with walk. You know, walking is the best form of exercise. As Anju said, that cardiovascular exercise, which increase your heart rate. So once the person starts walking and slowly when his stamina is increasing, then he can go on to some lying down exercises. But if, if he finds that due to the uh, upgrade paunch or uh, lots of belly fat, if the person cannot lie down on the back, or on the stomach, then he can start with the side, sideways, uh, you know, lie down sideways and do the exercises. And once, you know, the person starts doing it, so in a, in a span of time, he will find that his stamina has increased. Then from lying down exercise, he can go to sitting exercise and finally to standing up exercises, whereby if the person is comfortable and can add Surya Namaskar, then it's, it's nothing like it because it involves each and every body part. And then the person along with that asana can incorporate pranayam exercise pranayams as anju said and this prayer pranayam will actually help to uh, you know the flow of uh, vital force throughout the body and the person will start feeling more flexible and more better and then uh, they can have meditation and all you know relaxation because the parasympathetic system, uh, nervous system is uh, activated the person will feel calm and, uh, you know, if the person is into all that, their uh, mind will automatically be trained to have a mindful eating and all that, you know, a calm mind going for. So the person will definitely not go for overeating. And uh, this, this we have spoken about asana, pranayam, we have gone for meditation. And then uh, a person can have, a, uh, you know, vihar. When you say ahar, vihar, asha, vichar, the vihar part, you know, if the person is into uh, recreation and getting good sleep 
uh definitely because you know one of the factors when you are not sleeping properly the next day you crave for high ca- high calorie foods it is very much natural so a proper sleep is also uh, required all these things are going to balance the person's et- metabolism and uh, but metabolism means the bo- rate at which the body is burning the calories so a person will be more comfortable because whatever if the person's metabolism is uh, working properly whatever the person eats will be burnt off and uh, the world of easily because you are if you are following a satvic diet so you are even conserving the energy for a uh, healing of your body and then the positive thoughts if the person is also into something karma yoga and into its, in uh, doing some action the person is de- definitely um, distracted away from overeating or something so these are the some mm-hmm. simple tricks and then yeah one more thing i would like to add is Uh, like you don't have to break your daily routine like but in your office if you're uh, going by car you can park it at a distance and walk for some distance take the stairs instead of the lift and in your uh, desk or the work desk where you're where you're working in your drawer instead of like how anju said instead of keeping those fried things or something you can keep makhana or some healthy fruit you can carry you know these are the small things which you can make changes you don't have to make very very big changes but make small changes which you can always take it as a thing for your lifestyle you know change and maintain it to, uh, for your uh, entire lifestyle and these small changes definitely will help you in losing uh, you know drop by drop like you can st- uh, start shedding weight and become more active so okay. what's the next question, yes please? yes the next question is does breathing techniques pranayama help for obesity in any way meera chavan is asking it i suppose Vastrika is one pranayam which helps. Kapalbhati, a kriya, but also called a pranayam, will also help. Both of these will help. Then Nadi Sholan, that is Anulom Milom, which is balancing, will also help. Yes, because as Anju rightly said, these are all going to affect your metabolism, even Surya Vedan. So they all will increase your yes. metabolism. And once your metabolism is increased, then you don't have to worry because your body will uh, definitely. You burn whatever instead of storing, you are you are burn, you know you are burning away the calories. And uh, mm-hmm. also one yeah one more thing uh, I wanted to add here was uh, you know uh, if you want uh, your metabolism to be uh, you know always working rather than to slow down the metabolism, then you know one more factor is there that is your muscle. You, you know as we age, our muscle becomes less and uh, our uh, the fat. i mean fat is more and muscle is less so it is a muscle which you know increases helps to increase your basal metabolic rate so when you are having a good protein and you are working out you know where working out all the muscles of your body so this will prevent your muscle from shrinking and the more muscle you have the higher bmr like you will burn everything but if your muscle is deprived i mean if your muscle is lost then your bmr will go on dropping yeah Also, back to pranayam. Uh, while prasdrika, uh, kapalbhati, and all are energizing, will help you shed weight. I think you can also use pranayam as a, to- a tool to calm yourself. Once you feel okay. calm, you have faith that yes, you can overcome this problem. You can take charge of your health. But if you're not calm, and if you're hyper, or worried, or anxious, then the problem will deteriorate, or it will, you know, just keep on adding. so you can use it as a tool to calm yourself as well uh, yes uh, next- and yeah this is lavanya singh she is asking can yoga be customized to suit different body types and fitness levels in terms of obesity management of course yes that's what it is all about to do what suits you the best like choti also explained that if there is someone who cannot do a few asanas or any asan or if they have health condition or physically unable to do it they uh, we can customize it or any yoga teacher will customize it for them and uh, chalk out a routine which is pra- uh, comfortable for that person yes i agree danju so yes because in therapy also you know it has to be customized of a person is very very obese you have to train her his or her body accordingly and if the person is just on the borderline of obesity or just an overweight person definitely then um, in terms of fitness and body type he will be able his stamina will be more better than the other person who is much more obese and accordingly like he can 
uh, start with simple things and once the stamina is more increased he can go to an advanced level right so there is a beginner intermediate and advanced so it depends upon the body type yes it can be customized now next is sakshi uh, sakshi chetty she wants to know she says hi anjali and jyoti i wanted to know can regular yoga practice improve metabolism and aid in weight management yes because that's what yoga is all about regularizing your system the whole body so your metabolic uh, or the metabolism also uh, regularizes with that your hormones regularize with that so yes uh yeah anju because here yes well, of course regular uh, sakshi regular yoga practice brings a lot uh, brings n number of changes in your body it affects each and every system so you yourself if you are doing it on a, even if for one month you will see the difference one month before what you were before doing yoga because each and every system is working your circulation is improving your respiration is uh, is benefited and your cells are receiving better nutrition so definitely it's working in two a way by increasing a metabolism the metabolism slows down when you are inactive you are sedentary so when you are working out you are doing your yoga definitely you are working on all your glands and your glands will definitely improve your metabolism or yoga acts on all the endocrine glands and once the glands are normalized your metabolism also will be on the right track so it will help in uh, weight management Next question, Deepa Agrawal wants to say, what's a beginner-friendly yoga pose that surprisingly burns a lot of calories? If you have no health issues, Surya Namaskar. Yes, and very beginner-friendly. Also, we can add along with Surya Namaskar, we can do uh, this. You know what? Pavan Mukhtasan and the Paschimottanasan or Hasta Pasta Padasan. So beginners, you know, if they start doing that and if the body becomes more flexible and if they are doing as anju said surya namaskar then nothing like like it yes next question uh, siddhi dubey she is asking what are some practical tips for someone with a busy schedule to incorporate yoga into a weight loss regime okay busy schedule uh, yes but then you need to take time out for yourself maybe teen minutes in the morning for a walk and then 15 minutes of some asana practice should help you at least yeah. that much and yeah she needs some practical tips with a busy schedule so what I'll, i'll tell you practical tips is like before lunch you know even if you have to just go down you can just uh, lift yeah take the stairs and then you know just uh, if you want to give the file to your boss or someone you instead of giving it to the pew you yourself go and give it and then in yeah. when you're sitting on the chair you can do some forward bendings backward bending some stretching of the spine get up do some talasana in between there are so many times you know you can incorporate yes in between whatever time even if you're getting two minutes just get uh, just uh, use it and then even after your meals if you are just sitting free for 5 10 minutes you can add nispan bow or just close your eyes and sit or uh, you know if you have the uh, uh, a good sitting arrangement you can sit even in vajrasana small small tips you know small you can you just have to wear there's a will there's a way you have to find out the ways how you can incorporate a single asana also in between when you're getting a one or two minute break right true true very true yes now this is vinita she is asking hello great to be here are there any yoga asanas when there is excessive growth in the body which is not due to overeating or something but due to hormonal imbalance again yoga will definitely help in uh, your uh, hormone uh, uh, balancing you know because the main thyroid gland which is concerned with the metabolism is definitely uh, yeah it's uh, you know yoga helps to have your uh, hormone uh, re- regulation asans like sarvangasana bhujangasana dhanurasana yes. all these help to regularize your hormones so they will help you definitely even ushtrasan the camel pose or or vipreet karni or just lie down with your legs up the wall that will also help to regularize your uh, thyroid gland so it should definitely help yes then uh, juhi is asking hi hope uh, both are doing great i want to know does yoga specifically target belly fat yes what i said paschimottanasan yes. and even the hasta padasan they are all working on your belly whichever you know whichever asana you are doing and if it is massaging your 
uh, abdominal organs that means the blood circulation to your organs is increasing once the blood circulation is increasing that organ is stimulated definitely it will use you know use up the surrounding fat for its energy and definitely the belly fat will go off yes anju ियंसिसनिमेंटिया <laughs> no nothing over the years i have had several students who are you know just practicing regularly whether with me or by themselves and they have found it beneficial so nothing in specific no. just please go yeah ahead. okay so i had one case of a uh, girl like you know she had lost her mother in the childhood and it was all that stress which made her overeating because you know she used to see the children uh in the school like they were uh, if they were being fed by the mother and all she used to get an attack you know she wanted to eat something because her mother had what uh, she had a step mother who had deprived her of all the uh good things even she would not give her uh, food on time so she had to you know see whenever her mother would sleep the step mother she would steal something from the refrigerator and accordingly like you know she was deprived of food and once you're deprived of food you really want that thing so you know she used to stuff herself whenever her mother was not there so all this led led to binge eating and obesity to her uh, in her life you know but when she grew up uh, all this you know if any sort of stress like you see someone uh, any mother uh, child you know lovingly like a mother feeding she used to get on stress she could even eat 10 vada pavs or something like that you know it was a case but then finally when she was she uh, got engaged and her fiance was there she wanted to you know reduce the weight for her marriage and it so happened like uh, she came to us so we gave her the ahar vihar achar vichar and like she was working as a what you say it professional so you know we gave her those tips practical tips and all and uh, even like just instead of traveling by uh, her fiance's bike she started traveling by train and all started climbing steps and you know she started keeping having a positive frame of mind and she forgave her mother in law i mean her step mother and uh, she you know she tried to keep her mind calm and happy all the time with positive thoughts the, she did some karma yoga like teaching uh, computers uh, to the neighborhood children and all she used to spend half an hour daily all these you know when she started incorporating yoga and uh, we gave her one cheat day like every sunday you can eat one meal like cheat but you know it's so surprising like even if sunday would come na she would want to do that because she had that motivation of yoga and uh, she was doing her asanas uh, she woke up early every uh, day like half an hour to just incorporate whatever asanas we gave and slowly and steadily like in 3 months she could lose quite a lot and uh, that was a motivation for her itself and by the time she was getting married uh, she was really in good shape That's nice. Yes. So encouraging. Yes. Now, Virendra Chabra is asking, how does yoga compare to traditional form of exercises in term of effectiveness for weight loss? Uh, here, I would like to say that uh, you know the traditional uh, forms of exercise, or if you are saying those weight training, your gym, gym management, and all those things, you know, in that. the thing is you know you are doing your exercise but then you're tired entire day here you're not tired you are active all day because you are not uh, doing much of uh, stress on your body there it is stress and uh, you're stressing your muscles here you're you know working on your endocrine glands you are working on your body or your mind your emotions everything there is only working on the body there also in your yes. you may that the weight loss is more uh, rapid or fast with that kind of exercise so anything which is like a fast drop will also have a fast gain so if you stop doing it you'll gain like this but when you drop with yoga it is gradual 
so the increase will also or the weight gain also will not be as much it will be slow in case you're not practicing for a few days you won't put on lots of weight because you've gradually got it done agreed 100% true aran you very much true so and yoga has to be a lifestyle not just for one or two months just okay. to lose weight it has to be lifestyle so and i think the questions are over the questions oh. are over that was all okay great so so the anju should we conclude yes please go ahead yes so now uh, uh, you know listening to anju and uh, listening to everything about obesity so as we conclude our exploration of yoga as a therapy for obesity let me leave you with one this thought just as a river gently carves its path through the landscape so too does yoga sculpts our bodies minds and spirits with grace and intention through the ancient practices of yoga we discover not only the power to transform our physical self but also the wisdom to cultivate self love acceptance and inner peace concluding that we'll, let us embark on this journey together supporting and inspiring one another along the way and for the unity of our shared experiences and the diversity of our individual stories lies the true beauty and the richness of the human spirit so thank you for joining us on this transformative journey through the ancient of art of yoga namaste thank you namaste